It's considered the fastest two minutes in sports. Every jockey, trainer, and owner dreams of winning the Kentucky Derby. Sometimes those dreams become reality. California Prom shines bright in the Kentucky Derby. The journey to Louisville can be grueling. Even the best horses in the country can fall victim to injury. Texas Red with a dramatic win in the juvenile. Leave the light on. We'll do it by a half length over Frosted. Far from over, digging in at the rail. Net gain on the outside. I had Bob could go either way. Some fall off the Derby trail. Others can come storming back. American Pharaoh answering this test with flying colors. American Pharaoh will romp home in the Rebel. He is indeed the ruler. American Pharaoh, breathtaking in a mesmerizing performance. He's dominated the West Coast. What a horse race. It's firing line and Dortmund gonna hit it together. Dortmund's comeback. Dortmund has all hard another stylish performance. Dortmund another superb performance. Never looked like losing the Santa Anita Derby. While he's been shining brightly in Louisiana. Coming over the top is international star, the Lacombe Two International Star. International Star, the Lacombe Dan Brizzle Star Stakes winner now shined again in New Orleans. International Star again triumphed in the end. Todd's squad is stronger than ever. Carpe Diem in front. He'll make his three-year-old debut a winning one. Carpe Diem rolling through Lexington and headed on for Churchill Downs. Materiality is undefeated. He has won the Florida Derby. And this year, there'll even be an international flavor. And the Derby's all over. Boom, the hitch is absolutely tearing away. Boom, the hitch, eased in the run of the judge, has won the Derby. 20 horses will enter the Churchill starting gate on the first Saturday in May, and only one will forever become a part of racing history. Hello and welcome to the Kentucky Derby Profile Show. I'm Tom Cassidy. The Kentucky Derby is the most prestigious race in the world for three-year-olds. The glitz, the glamour, the tradition, the history, all a part of what makes this race so special. On Saturday, 20 of these battle-tested Colts will travel a mile and a quarter for the first time in their short careers. Having the best horse might not be good enough. Some may get the ideal trip. Others may run into some trouble. It's all a part of what makes winning this race so special. Everything needs to be just right to win. But first, these horses have to earn a spot in the starting gate. The Kentucky Derby point system has been in place for three years, and according to KentuckyDerby.com, to earn a spot in the starting gate, the horses must travel along the road to the Kentucky Derby, a series of 35 designated races at tracks across the country and around the world. Points are awarded to the top four finishers in each race. The 20 horses with the most points will earn a spot in the starting gate on the first Saturday in May. The races are broken down into two categories, the Kentucky Derby prep season, and the Kentucky Derby Championship Series. While winning a race during the prep season can be encouraging, winning a race in the Championship Series essentially means you have enough points to make it into the Derby field. Let's take a look back at how these 20 horses got here, starting with a top point earner in 2015. Since 2003, owners Ken and Sarah Ramsey have entered six horses in the run for the Roses, and none of them have ever finished better than eighth. Ten cents a shine in 2003. The Ramsey's racing success is built largely around the accomplishments of their homebred champion sire, Kittens Joy. But ironically, they arrive at the race this year with a New York bred son of 2000 Derby winner, Fusaichi Pegasus. Horse for course or not, Ken and Sarah Ramsey's international star has emerged as a top Kentucky Derby contender on the merit of three impressive wins in 2015, sweeping the Derby preps at the fairgrounds. After running mostly on turf and synthetic surfaces at age two, including a lackluster ninth place finish in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, international star was set on the Derby trail and picked up a single derby point with a fourth place showing in the Kentucky Jockey Club at Churchill Downs.
But a switch to jockey Miguel Mena, along with his debut at the fairgrounds, saw the Mike Maker trainee really come into his own. First, a come from behind win in the Grade 3 LeCompte. Coming over the top is international star for Miguel Mena, the LeCompte 2 international star. Then, the risen star. International star, the LeCompte down risen star, stakes winner now, shined again in New Orleans. Then, stretching out to a mile and an eighth for the first time, another rail skimming come from behind win in the Grade 2 Louisiana Derby. International star again, triumphed in the end. We had him very early in his uh, two-year-old year, and he was one of our top selections as far as the horses that uh, we were breaking, and uh, he hasn't let us down. All told, the son of Fusaichi Pegasus has already earned over a million dollars and has amassed 171 Kentucky Derby points. The 78th running of the Santa Anita Derby. Here's Trevor Dedman with the call. And away they go to a very good start. And then Dortmund just took a little awkward step after the start, but has recovered quickly. And Dortmund on the inside now. One lucky Dane up alongside and cross the line. Three of them in a line as they go into the turn first time round. Bolo is going to get a great spot right behind the leaders. Prospect Park has taken back second last and bad Reed Sanchez at the back. Six runners tightly grouped past the seven eights and Dortmund has the lead now and Martin Garcia slowing them down up front. Dortmund now just takes them along at a leisurely pace. In second, we have one lucky Dane. On the far side has crossed the line in the red cap. Bolo is going to have to go wide, but only two and a half, three lengths off the leaders. Prospect Park between runners. And last of all, Bad Reed Sanchez. All the riders keeping their eye on Dortmund out here, who's taking them along now. Dortmund in front, three parts of a length. One lucky Dane is right there, second. Cross the line, red cap on the far side. Down at the rail, Bad Reed Sanchez up to fourth, only two lengths off them. Prospect Park and Bolo the last two, but they're no more than three off Dortmund as they go into the turn. Half mile left to go now in the Santa Anita Derby and Dortmund is striding on for home and Dortmund now gets a tap on the shoulder to kick away from them. One lucky Dane crossed the line, Bolo on the outside, Prospect Park under pressure. Heads a turn for home in the $1 million Santa Anita Derby and Dortmund has opened up on them. And it's Dortmund gone clear now to lead it by four. Bolo down the center of the track. One lucky Dane, Prospect Park down at the rail. They're all chasing Dortmund, who's clear by five with a 16th to go. And Dortmund, another superb performance. Never looked like losing the Santa Anita Derby. Rumps to an easy win under Martin Garcia. He's been one of the most successful trainers in the country, and his name has become synonymous with Southern California racing and three-year-old talent. His in-the-money percentage in the Derby is at 33, having saddled 24 entrants, including three winners, his first in 1997. Silver Charm at the 16th pole, free house to the inside. Captain Budget is running after Silver Charm. Here's the line. It'll be close, and it is Silver Charm. The next year, he was back with Real Quiet and became one of only six trainers to win the run for the Roses in back-to-back -back years. Four years later, he was back with War Emblem. By now, you probably know of whom I am speaking, Bob Baffert. This year, he saddles two Colts, American Pharaoh, last year's two-year-old champion, and this talented son of Big Brown. Trained by Bob Baffert and standing at over 17 hands, the undefeated Dortmund broke his maiden at Santa Anita, then won an allowance race at Churchill Downs before squaring off against stakes competition in the Los Alamitos Futurity. Dortmund still a half length back third. Mr. Z, the experience. Dortmund on the outside with the brilliance. They're coming to the wire with firing line between them. Firing line or Dortmund. Photo finish. The tenacity he exhibited in the stretch was foreshadowing of things to come. In his first derby prep of the season, rival firing line bested him by nearly half a length at the eighth pole, but Dortmund didn't quit. Dortmund comes back at firing line, what a horse race. It's firing line and Dortmund gonna hit it together. Dortmund's comeback. All systems were go for the Kaleem Shah star Colt coming out of the Lewis 
and one month later, Dortmund impressed fans again with a gutty win against a salty bunch in the San Felipe. And Dortmund, another stylish performance. And a month after that, a romp in the Santa Anita Derby. And Dortmund, another superb performance. Never looked like losing the San Anita Derby. He keeps marching on. He just, you know, he just comes back and he comes out of a race and it doesn't take that much out of him. So he's just... He has so much foundation, you know, going into Kentucky Derby, we're really excited. The son of Big Brown has earned 170 Kentucky Derby points and will go into the Derby starting gate as one of the betting favorites. And they're off in the Toyota Bluegrass Stakes. Carpe Diem and Ocho, 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 both flashing early speed. Classy Class comes away third. Gorgeous Bird is away running in fourth, then Dancing Moon in fifth as the field heads to the first turn. Ocho, Ocho, Ocho toward the inside has the advantage. Ground-saving trip around the first turn from that inside starting spot and leads it by a length. Carpe Diem placed just off the leader's flank now in the second position. Gorgeous Bird is third toward the inside by a head. Classy Class forwardly placed and fourth up toward the outside. Danzig Moon is in fifth. Pepperoni goes sixth, Fremento seventh, unrivaled eighth and last. 24 seconds the time for the opening quarter. Carpe Diem right alongside of Ocho, Ocho, Ocho. These two matching strides up the back stretch. A length and a half in front of Gorgeous Bird in third a half length. Classy Class is fourth by two. Danzig Moon is fifth by nearly three lengths. And then Pepperoni followed by Fremento and unrivaled is last. The first half mile went in 48 seconds. Ocho, 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 the leader into the far turn, and Carpe Diem comes at him again from the outside. They've been going at it since the start. They're separated by a neck. Gap of two lengths to Classy Class, third by a neck, outside of Gorgeous Bird in fourth, and Danzig Moon is fifth. The rest have running to do. They come to the quarter pole. Ocho, 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 trying to take it all the way up front for Santiago Gonzalez, chased all the way by Carpe Diem. Classy Class is third, Danzig Moon, and with a shot in fourth on the outside, Carpe Carpe Diem takes the lead. John Velasquez, a quick peek over his right shoulder. Danzig Moon coming. Ocho, Ocho, Ocho fought hard, but he's third. Final furlong of the toy on the bluegrass. It will be Carpe Diem rolling through Lexington and headed on for Churchill Downs. It's hard to get a horse into the Kentucky Derby field, but not if you're Todd Pletcher. Since 2000, Todd Pletcher has had 40 horses in the race but only one has won the run for the Roses. Melbourne's Thomas has the lead. Super Saver down in the fence. Now he's in front. Super Saver, Calvin Burrell. One for one from the Derby here. Melbourne's Thomas runs in second. Teddy Otto is now third. Make music for me. Big ball shot. Now fourth on the outside. And they're coming down to the finish. And it is Super Saver. A late run from my box. But it's Super Saver and Calvin Burrell. The unflappable Calvin Burrell. Since winning the Kentucky Derby in 2010, Pletcher has had 12 runners, but only two have even hit the board. Not to mention that in 2011, the Derby favorite Uncle Mo was scratched before even making it into the starting gate. This year, he'll have multiple runners in the Derby, but his best chance to win is with this Windstar-owned Colt. Carpe Diem has been on everybody's Kentucky Derby radar since September of last year. After breaking his maiden at Saratoga, the Todd Pletcher trainee took the grade one breeder's futurity at Keeneland by over six lengths. And Carpe Diem has seized the day at Keeneland. He just continues to draw it clear. What an impressive two-year-old Keeneland sales grad, Carpe Diem, to take it. Then at nine to five, the son of Giants Causeway went into the gate as the favorite in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. But Texas Red stole the show, and a fast-closing Carpe Diem settled for place honors. He then took three months off and re-emerged in the Grade Two Tampa Bay Derby. At even money, the Windstar Farm and Stone Street Stables' own prospect left no doubt that his two-year-old form would carry over to three. It's Carpe Diem in front. He'll make his three-year-old debut, a winning one, reporting home four lengths to the good. Needing one more prep to ready his colt for the Kentucky Derby, Fletcher entered Carpe Diem in the Toyota Bluegrass at Keeneland. Again, at short odds, Carpe Diem stalked pace setter Ocho 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 and drew away impressively. It will be Carpe Diem rolling through Lexington and headed on for Churchill Downs. 
Scott. That's just great. I mean, this horse is a special horse. Um, you know, he gives us joy every time he runs. He's a, just a blessed horse to be around. We just couldn't be happier. He's always been the first betting choice, but despite his considerable accomplishments, considering the depth of this year's bunch, he might not be able to say that on the first Saturday in May, but experts will certainly give him strong consideration. If recent derby heartbreak can be represented by one man, it just might be Ahmed Zayat. His horses have run second in three of the last six renewals, with perhaps the most painful of all being Bodie Meister's runner-up finish in 2012. This year, Zayat Stables will saddle three entrants, El Kabir, the long shot Mr. Z, and a colt that has been on everybody's derby radar since last summer. Pioneer of the Nile, the 2009 Santa Anita Derby champ and Kentucky Derby runner-up is the sire of a key derby contender this year, American Pharaoh. But American Pharaoh, the son of Pioneer of the Nile, has absolutely annihilated them in the Del Mar Futurity. Having broken his maiden in the Del Mar Futurity, American Pharaoh's next step would be around two turns September 27th at Santa Anita. American Pharaoh is all class, scintillating performance from American Pharaoh in the front runner stakes. Zayat Stables plan to run American Pharaoh next in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Unfortunately, Bob Baffert discovered a deep foot bruise and was forced to scratch him from the race. But that didn't deter the Eclipse Award voters from crowning him as the best two-year-old in the country. After a five-month layoff, American Pharaoh made his three-year-old debut at Oaklawn in The Rebel, and he did not disappoint. American Pharaoh will romp home in The Rebel, widening to win by about eight. He was so impressive in the Rebel that Bob Baffert decided that he could squeeze one more prep in before the Kentucky Derby. Same track, same result. He is indeed the ruler, American Pharaoh, breathtaking in a mesmerizing performance. American Pharaoh has already won three grade one races and heads to Kentucky as one of the likely favorites to take down the run for the roses. Karen McLaughlin has won the richest race in North America, but he's never won the Kentucky Derby. In 2005, long shot Giacomo came out of nowhere to beat McLaughlin's closing argument. In the last 10 years, McLaughlin has had only three Derby starters, with his best finish coming in 2006 when Jazzle dead heated for fourth. This year, he's back with a talented son of Tap. After a heartbreaking loss in 2005 with closing argument, trainer Kieran McLaughlin is still looking for his first Kentucky Derby winner. This year, he heads to the Derby with Frosted. Frosted began his two-year-old campaign at Aqueduct, where he broke his maiden and placed second in the Remsen. In 2015, McLaughlin decided to ship Frosted from New York to Florida, where he would eventually run second in the Holy Bull and fourth in the Fountain of Youth. Following a couple of disappointing starts, McLaughlin decided that Frosted would undergo some changes. He underwent minor throat surgery, adjusted his blinkers, and McLaughlin changed riders as Joel Rosario would earn the mount aboard Frosted in the Wood Memorial. All of these changes paid off in a big way. Frosted, Penn Center fights on, but Frosted's got it, and he's pulling away, and Frosted has won the Wood Memorial. Frosted is owned by Godolphin Racing, who is also looking for their first derby winner. Their most recent runner, Alpha, finished 12th in 2012. Next stop for Frosted, Louisville, Kentucky. Get an edge with TVG. Deposit up to $150, wager your deposit, and we'll match it. All the details at TVG.com. Gates are back. They're racing in the derby and Motar a little slow to move. Mork to Hidge from the inside, one of the first out and tap that came out very quickly. Golden Barrows began well and Dia Dumas goes forward and it's Japan one, two and three as they race past the judge the first time and towards the turn out of the straight. Tap that claimed the rail. Golden Barrows second, Dia Dumas third and Sir Fever got caught in traffic, had to check going into that bend. Mook to hit settles on the rail. Elna Jamel Faze pushes up in the middle. 
a length and a half away Faithful Creek on the outside of Mota by Johnny Be Good is second last and Maptool had dropped out to the rear of the field after they left 400 meters behind in 26 flat and traveling down the back tap that showed the way at the 1100 meters peg from Golden Barrows Sir Fever has now hooked wide on the track he's four deep going up to attack Diodumas is three wide in a line of four as they really test themselves heading towards that back corner hook to hedge is a length away at the 800 meters mark enjoying the run of the race one to Motar three quarters of a length to Faithful Creek then Math Tool, followed by my Johnny Be Good, and Elder Gem L Faze had dropped out to be a long last of all as Tap That brings them to the 500 metres peg. They're about to round the bend. Tap That and Golden Barrows, the Japanese pair, flatten for the run to the judge. Book to Hedge is a length and a half away. He comes around their heels now and is about to give chase. Book to Hedge moved up with 250 metres left to go, went straight past the leading pair and went for home. Christoph Simeon put his foot flat to the medal and the derby's all over. Mook the Hitch is absolutely tearing away. It's a matter of how far. Mook the Hitch, eased in the run of the judge, has won the derby. The last foreign bred horse to win the Kentucky Derby was Sonny's Halo in 1983. Since then, nine others have tested their skills in America's classic race, with Irish-bred Castledale being the most recent. He ran 14th in 2004. This year, trainer Mike DeCock brings, by way of Dubai, another Irish-bred. After making his career debut in a pair of turf races at Newmarket, Mutahij was sent to campaign at three in Dubai at Maidon Racecourse. He immediately took to the newly installed dirt course there with two consecutive wins before finishing second behind Goldoffin's math tool in the UAE 2000 Guineas at the distance of one mile. Then after a comfortable win in the ungraded Al Kia, the Mike DeCock trainee blitzed his foes with an impressive win in the 100 point grade two $2 million UAE Derby at a mile and 3 sixteenths. Look, the hitch is absolutely tearing away. It's a matter of how far. Look to hitch, eased in the run of the judge, has won the derby. The Irish bred son of Dubawi earned 100 derby points with the win. This was has given us a chance to get to Kentucky now, to the derby there, um, and that would be living the dream. And I think that's that's why this is this is really special. Mugtahij is owned by Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Maktoum, nephew of Godolphin owner Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. He's the only Kentucky Derby contender with a win at a distance of greater than a mile and an eighth, and with his considerable credentials, will likely make an interesting option for those willing to look his way on Derby Day. They're all in line. They're off in the Florida Derby. And it's Jack Tripp who goes out to the front. Materiality's got speed too, and it's a knockout. And Upstart are close up to the pace as well. Upstart is a little bit wide, three deep into that first turn. It's a knockout comes to the outside and going out farther into the track, or my point exactly, along with Quimet. Down toward the inside, it's Amy's Flatter, Indian Audis off the pace, and Decabrist is last of them all. So Jack Tripp will lead the field to the backstretch with Materiality second through an opening quarter mile in 23 and 4 fifth seconds. Upstart is third to the outside of the top two, just a length off the lead. Then my point exactly, Quimet, it's a knockout, is in behind them in a bit of traffic there, and just to the inside of Amy's Flatter, Indian Audi is next, and Decabrist trails the field. Materiality sticks his neck in front of Jack Tripp with five furlongs to go. Now Jack Tripp counters and they're basically on even terms after a 48 and one half mile. An upstart has been sitting just to the outside of the top two throughout here. He's had a perfect stalking trip and they've got a half mile to go and now materiality and upstart take over and Jack Tripp gives way. Quimet is next. It's a knockout. Is under a ride. He's beginning to move in company with Amy's flatter but they're seven lengths behind materiality and upstart and they've gone three quarters in one 
12 and 2. Materiality and Upstart will come to the top of the stretch. Seven lengths in front of Amy Slatter. It's a knockout not going with them. Then Jack Tripp on the inside. It is a match race at the top of the stretch in the Florida Derby. And as they turn for home, it's Materiality on the inside. Grimly holding off Upstart. Materiality and Upstart. And they're seven lengths ahead of Amy Slatter down to the 16th pole. Materiality's got the lead. Materiality is putting away upstart. And Materiality is undefeated. He has won the Florida Derby. There hasn't been a horse since Apollo in 1882 that has won the Kentucky Derby without at least starting a race at two. The reasons for that are varied, but this is known. The Derby has always been a race that has required a fair amount of experience to win. Even the great Curlin only ran third in his fourth start after having not started at two. That brings us to materiality. Todd Fletcher's talented son of a fleet Alex. He broke his maiden on January 11th. Seven and a half weeks later, he cruised home in the ungraded Isla Mirada handicap. Then as the seven to two morning line third choice, he was bet down to nine to five. Down to the 16th pole. Materiality's got the lead. Materiality is putting away upstart. And Materiality is undefeated. He has won the Florida Derby. We were concerned about the, the short turnaround into this, but we felt like one of the rewards would be if he ran well, we'd get five weeks on the other end. And so yeah, that, uh, I think off a hard race like he had today, he'll appreciate that extra time. Horses don't know if their first start was before or after January 1st. For materiality, it's a question of whether or not he has the tough race experience to contend in what is sure to be a competitive renewal of the Kentucky Derby. And they're off. Toasting Master and Tis Shady go out for the lead, uninfluenced. And on the far outside, it's Blame Jim. Then it's Don't Bet with Bruno, who's racing in mid-pack, followed on the outside by Tensendor. Classy Class is down at the rail. Then El Kabir at the back are Combat Diver and Lieutenant Colonel. The three-year-olds head for the backstretch. On the outside, it is Blame Jim. And on the inside, it's Toasting Master. And those two hook up after an opening quarter mile in 23 seconds. They've opened up three lengths on Tish Shady in third. Uninfluenced is on the outside in fourth. Another gap, five or six lengths. Back to uh, Don't Bet with Bruno. Lieutenant Colonel's on the outside. El Kabir is down towards the rail. Then comes Classy Class and uh, Tensendor. And the trailer is a combat diver, half mile, 46 and three-fifth seconds. Toasting Master on the inside, leads by a head. Blame Jim on the outside in second, just in behind. Uninfluenced and tis shady. El Kabir has made progress up to fifth, but still four lengths from the front. On the outside is Lieutenant Colonel. Classy Class is trying to come through in between horses. They're at the top of the stretch. Three quarters in 112. And here comes El Kabir on the outside to now take over the lead. El Kabir is in front with an eighth of a mile to the finish. Classy Class now moves into second. On the outside is Tensendor. It's El Kabir with the lead as they come for the wire in the Gotham, and El Kabir has won it. After one of the most visually impressive maiden victories at Saratoga, El Kabir closed out his two-year-old season by capturing the grade two Kentucky Jockey Club. El Kabir, Imperia, and Eagle. El Kabir and Imperia on the wire together, and it looked like El Kabir held on. He then shipped to Aqueduct, where he would prove his performance in Kentucky was no fluke. El Kabir has built a three-length lead and just the 16th of the wire. It's the gray colt El Kabir to take the Jerome. El Kabir looked like he was well on his way to a third straight win in the Withers. But Todd Pletcher's Far From Over had other ideas. Here comes Far From Over on the outside of El Kabir. Classy Class is down at the rail. It's Far From Over over El Kabir. Ahmed Zayat and John Terranova decided to stay in New York and run him in the Gotham. And that decision paid off in a big way. It's El Kabir with the lead as they come for the wire in the Gotham. And El Kabir has won it. 
El Kabir's last prep in the Wood Memorial proved lackluster, rallying from off the pace to get third. El Kabir heads into the Churchill starting gate, looking to give owner Ahmed Zayat his first Kentucky Derby winner. They're off in the Besselu Stables Fountain of Youth. And Bluegrass Singer is sent right to the lead by Paco Lopez. And it's a knockout's going to go with him. Luis Saez sends him along too. And these two will head into the first turn together. And Frosted is right to the outside of them. Then Juan and Bina fourth on the inside. Upstart is fifth early. Right behind Frosted. And three lengths off the leaders. Then comes Gorgeous Bird from Ento. And Danny Boy takes his spot at the rear of the field. And races seven lengths off of Bluegrass Singer. Who heads them onto the back stretch through a 24. And one opening quarter Mile. The lead is three quarters of a length. And Frosted is second to the outside by another two, then a line of three. It's a knockout surrounded by Upstart on the outside and Juan and Bina from the rail. And in a perfect position behind them is Gorgeous Burgess loping along about six lengths off the lead, three ahead of Danny Boy and Framento at the back. They continue the run up the back stretch. Bluegrass Singer, and now Frosted is closer. They're almost dead even as they head for the far turn. And they went 47 and 4 fifth seconds for a half mile. So a little bit faster than the Holy Bull, but it's still a very sensible pace here. And as they move into the turn, Frosted makes his run for the lead. Frosted by a neck. Bluegrass Singer second. Upstart is third now. And Jose Ortiz is asking more run from him. Frosted two and a half lengths ahead of Upstart, who's still third. And now he's put to the whip as they come to the top of the stretch. And Frosted's looking good. Three quarters in 111 and three. And they're into the stretch. And Frosted turns for home in front. But now Upstart is even closer. And he edges up alongside. And it's a knockout is coming too. And suddenly it's these two that have taken over. Upstart and it's a knockout have gone by Frosted. It is upstart. It's a knockout. Just steady late. It's going to be upstart again. Nine days. That's all the rest upstart needed to win his second race in two weeks at Saratoga. Upstart comes with a flying finish. A flying finish to win. Upstart would close out his two-year-old season with a respectable second in the Champagne and a remarkable third place finish in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Rick Violet decided that Florida was where Upstart would begin his sophomore season, and he didn't disappoint. Upstart is pulling away, and he is pulling away impressively to win the Holy Bowl. That performance meant that he would be the eventual favorite for the second leg of the three-year-old series at Gulfstream Park. Upstart, and it's a knockout of gone by Frosted. It is Upstart, it's a knockout just steady late. It's going to be Upstart again. Upstart finished first, but was disqualified to second for drifting and interfering with It's a Knockout. His second place finish didn't discourage anyone from making him the clear choice to beat in the Florida Derby. Down to the 16th pole. Materiality's got the lead. Materiality is putting away Upstart. And Materiality is undefeated. He has won the Florida Derby. It was deja vu for Upstart, but this time the stewards didn't even post the inquiry sign. Regardless, Upstart managed to gain enough points to safely enter the Kentucky Derby starting gate. Originally purchased for the bargain basement price of $2,500, Far Right was stakes placed at two and picked up two Derby points finishing third in the Delta jackpot. The son of Notional debuted at three, earning his first stakes victory and 10 derby points in the Smarty Jones at Oaklawn. Far right is coming with a nice rally on the inside. He's storming home. Mr. Z is in the middle of nowhere as far right comes to get the lead and the win in the Smarty Jones. Jockey Mike Smith kept them out aboard the Ron Moquette trainee in the grade three Southwest, where after settling into eighth down the backside, he entered the lane full of horse, dove to the rail and shot for home. Far right has the momentum, and far right takes the lead close to home. Far right and Mike Smith winning the Southwest. He earned 10 more derby points with that win. His connections then entered their star colt in the grade one Arkansas Derby. Needing at least a third place finish to comfortably make it into the field, far right proved the best of the rest as American Pharaoh ran away with the race, and far right picked up the pieces closing from last to get second. He now sits in 10th with 62 derby points, 
he'll probably be a long shot. And as a deep closer, he'll have plenty of work to do on the first Saturday in May. All the info you need to know is in the Kentucky Derby playbook. Exclusive handicapping products, TBG Pro's picks, Derby bios, and time form U.S. race previews. Log in now to preview. It's going to be it's a knockout late move old mountain lane and the two puncher horses hit it together. Having won his first career start as a two year old, it's a knockout made his three year old debut on January 4th in a five and one quarter length win over allowance company. But it's a knockout's running away. It's a knockout by four in the end. An impressive winner in his second career start. He looked to maintain his undefeated record in the grade two fountain of youth. But now upstart is even closer, and he edges up alongside, and it's a knockout is coming too. And suddenly it's these two that have taken over. Upstart, and it's a knockout have gone by Frosted. It is upstart, it's a knockout, just steady late. It's going to be upstart again. There's been a disqualification in this race. The stewards have disqualified number seven upstart from first and placed him second for interference in the stretch with number five, it's a knockout. Although finishing second to Upstart, the Gulfstream Park stewards deemed that Upstart interfered with It's a Knockout and reversed the order of finish, handing It's a Knockout his first 50 derby points in a controversial decision. We came out of it very well. You know, you hate to hate to win like that. I, I was very proud of the horse's effort to step up and run that well and only his third start. And, you know, he's definitely impeded. It's, just depends on which side you're on to depend on how, how much and if you thought it affected the outcome. but. Nonetheless, we're very proud of his effort and happy he was uh, awarded the win. It's a knockout went into the Florida Derby undefeated, but came up short and finished fourth to stablemate materiality. They're off and firing line got out well with Y2 and on their outside is Malibu Mogul. Coming forward on the outside, pain and misery, but there's not much pace on. And in front, it's firing line pushing out on the inside of Y2, who's a neck in front. A head away third on their outside is Malibu Mogul, and then a length away is Pain and Misery. It is now RJ in the center, and back tucked away on the inside is Where's the Moon? They're very tightly bunched, and out the stretch, Dirt Monster is last. Firing line reserving every inch of energy on the inside, and on the outer is Y2. They share the lead. Three parts to Malibu Mogul right up in third. A length away, Tis now RJ, and Dirt Monster finding room in the center. Racing four wide is Pain and Misery, and dropping to last is Where's the Moon? They head down the back stretch, and the leader is Y2, Y2 in front. Firing line on the inside, ahead away in third is Malibu Mogul. Dirt Monster is engaging them and Pain and Misery five wide. Right behind them is Tisnow RJ in a clump and two lengths away. Last of all is Where's the Moon? Gary Stevens threads through on the inside and goes to the lead now. And Firing Line gets away and is traveling really well. Firing Line as they go off the far turn by a length. Why not losing a little bit of touch? And then Malibu Mogul, Tisnow RJ wriggling home on the inside, but he's gone for home, Gary Stevens. And Firing Line's two in front. Tis now RJ's gone to second. Running home from the back is Pain and Misery. And on the inside, where's the Moon's making a late run? They go inside the quarter, and he hasn't moved on firing line. Turns in front in the Sunland Derby. And it's Gary Stevens and firing line just toying with them. Firing line well ahead. And it's a battle for the miners. Tis now RJ, where's the Moon on the outside? But this is an absolute exhibition of class and an amazing talent. Firing line is going to just go around like a hand canter and hits to Kentucky with so much promise, full of ammunition. Having never finished worse than second in four career starts, Firing Line has made a name for himself in battling fellow Derby hopeful Dortmund, starting with their first encounter in the Grade One Los Alamitos Futurity. Firing Line is in between them. It's the race we've all been waiting for. Firing line has his nose in front. Mr. Z battles right back. Dortmund still a half length back third. Mr. Z the experience. Dortmund on the outside with the brilliance. They're coming to the wire with firing line between them. Firing line or Dortmund. Photo finish. Ahead separated three future derby contenders. Firing line and Dortmund continue the rivalry in their three-year-old debuts in the Robert B. Lewis at Santa Anita. 
and firing line goes for home. Dortmund tries to re-rally, but firing line has his measure with an eighth of a mile to go. Firing line, Dortmund's not done, he's coming right back at him. Dortmund comes back at firing line, what a horse race. It's firing line and Dortmund gonna hit it together. After that tough fight against Dortmund, firing line shipped to New Mexico to try his luck in the Sunland Derby, where he didn't have to face his nemesis. Firing line is gonna just go around like a hand canter and hits to Kentucky with so much promise, full of ammunition. Firing line by 15 lengths. Simon, I think he, he picked the right race for him today. We've got an extra week now going into the Kentucky Derby, and uh, this was not a tough race on him today, so all signs are good. A Keeneland purchase, firing line has never finished worse than second in five career starts. And thanks to the Sunland Derby victory, he's assured a spot in the starting gate on the first Saturday in May. It took Dan Zygmunt three times to break his maiden. Dan Zygmunt, who comes home a convincing five-length winner. The Mark Cassie Colt would stay in Florida, but this time he would travel to Tampa Bay to run in the Tampa Bay Derby. A fourth place finish was only good for five points, so Danzig Moon only had one more chance to enter into the Derby field, the Bluegrass Stakes at Keeneland. Danzig Moon with a big effort was second. Danzig Moon's second place finish got him the necessary points to get in the Churchill Downs starting gate on the first Saturday in May. He's lightly raced, but a second place finish over the Churchill Downs track in October could prove to be all the experience he needs to take the run for the roses. Never off the board in five starts, War Story broke his maiden at Churchill Downs before winning a two-turn allowance race at Fairgrounds on September 28th of his two-year-old season. The son of Northern of Fleet was then set on the Kentucky Derby Trail and competed in all three Fairgrounds preps. First, he finished second in the LeCompte. Then, in perhaps his best performance, he battled gamely in the stretch to finish second among an extremely competitive bunch in the Risen Star. War Story charging now. St. Joe Bay is third, then Keen Ice. Imperia on the foot outside. It's International Star. War Story was second. Then at two to one, he finished third behind International Star and Stanford in the grade two Louisiana Derby. Although the Tom Amos trainee hasn't won a race at three, he's earned 44 Derby points, plenty to reserve himself a spot in the starting gate. In all five of his career starts, War Story has raced with blinkers, but according to his connections, he'll go without them in the Derby, providing handicappers with an interesting angle to examine. New York bred Tensendor has raced exclusively at Aqueduct over his five race career. After finishing third against Open Company in his debut behind highly regarded Far From Over in December, the son of Warrior's reward broke his maiden against state breads at Aqueduct over a muddy track on inner dirt. Now there's some room for Tensender, and here he comes. It's damage control and Tensender, the big long shot and the favorite, and as they come for the wire, Tensender will get the win. He then finished fourth in his stakes debut in the grade three Withers, collecting one derby point, and fifth in the grade three Gotham. Still not registering much buzz on many derby lists, Tensendor was sent postward in the Grade 1 Wood Memorial at odds of 21 to 1. But he gave his connections and backers a thrill when he led a field that included Frosted, Daredevil, and El Kabir into the stretch. Tensendor turns for home in front in the Wood Memorial, and Frosted runs at him on the outside. These two into the final furlong. Tensendor running the race of his life. He hung on to finish a game second and collected 40 derby points. The George Weaver trained Colt finished his prep season with 41 points, plenty to get him into the race, but will most likely be one of the longer shots in the field. Get an edge with TVG. Deposit up to $150, wager your deposit, and we'll match it. All the details at TVG.com. It seems that every year, Todd Pletcher has at least one horse in the Kentucky Derby field. This year, he has Carpe Diem. 
multiple graded stakes winner Materiality is the undefeated Florida Derby winner. But what about Stanford? Stanford is clear by two and a very promising debut here. A two length winner on the wire. Stanford on the outside to the front. Coming down to the line, Stanford wins. Next up, the Isla Morata handicap at a mile and an eighth featuring both Materiality and Stanford. Even though he ran a valiant second to eventual Florida Derby winner Materiality, he was disqualified to sixth for interference around the three quarters pole. Pletcher decided that he was good enough to run in graded stakes company. The front running Stanford proved he could hold his own by running a valiant second in the Louisiana Derby. International star and Stanford and these two set for a final 16th clash. Four story is third. International star over Stanford. 40 points is enough to get you into the Kentucky Derby starting gate on the first Saturday in May. Stanford will attempt to become only the second horse sired by Malibu Moon to win the Kentucky Derby since Orb in 2013. He is without a doubt one of the best trainers that has ever lived. D. Wayne Lucas has won a record 14 Triple Crown races, including four Kentucky Derbies. He won with a filly in 1988. And from 1990 to 2000, he was able to return to the Churchill Downs Winter Circle three more times. Thunder Gulch, Tejano run, late run by Timber Country, but it's Thunder Gulch winning the Derby. It's Cavanier on the inside and Grindstone on the outside. McCarran and Bailey, here's the finish. Again, too tight to go. Charismatic train by Lucas on the outside. Now Lucas running one, two. Charismatic on the outside, takes command. On the inside, Cat Thief in the middle of the track, Benefi is flying, but it's charismatic, holding on to win it by a hand. He's had 12 runners since then, with his best finish coming in 2002, with Proud Citizen running second to War Emblem. This year, Lucas is back with a long shot, but as history has shown, you can never overlook the coach. Experience is the best teacher, and Mr. Z has plenty of it. He's raced 12 times at eight different tracks. He's gone up against the toughest competition, Carpe Diem, Texas Red, Dortmund, International Star, and American Pharaoh. No shame in falling short to those Colts. Since breaking his maiden, he's been racing all over the country. Delta Downs, Keeneland, Santa Anita, Oaklawn, Saratoga, Los Alamitos. He's been everywhere, accumulating points here and there. He had 14 points heading into the Arkansas Derby. A third place finish would mean that he would have enough points to get into the field, and he did just that. Mr. Z will join American Pharaoh and El Kabir as representatives of the Zayat Stables on the first Saturday in May. Mr. Z is still looking for his first win since his maiden, but the only time Mr. Z has visited the winner's circle was under the Churchill Twin Spires. And they're off in the Delta Downs jackpot. It was a stumble at the start for Wake Up Nick, but he recovered and he's forwardly placed. Mr. Z goes right out to the lead. Prime Engine is showing speed on the inside. Conquest Tsunami moves up in the yellow cap, and now he takes command. It's Conquest Tsunami and Sean Bridgemohan with the lead as they leave the chute. Prime Engine is close on the inside. Mr. Z is placed in third, now behind Rivals. Moving up is Ocho, Ocho, Ocho into fourth, but he crosses over toward the rail. Then comes Wake Up Nicks on the inside, followed by Saratoga Heater. Running together are Golden Actor and Red Button on the outside. Decabrist is second last after the quarter, when an extremely rapid 22-27. It's a long ways back to the trailer who is far right. We've got a speed duel up front. It's Conquest Tsunami on the outside. Prime Engine right down at the rail. Break of three lengths then to Mr. Z, just waiting to pounce from third as they straighten away up the back stretch. Ocho, 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 and Mike Smith are down along the inside. They save ground, now advancing on the leaders. Saratoga Heater moves up in the middle of the track. Back from there advancing, it's Wake Up Nick. On the inside, far right is really gobbling up ground. Dropping completely out is Conquest Tsunami. He is backed up. To the outside here is Golden Actor, along with Red Button and Decabrist is advancing.
advancing. The half and 45, 74, three quarters, 112, 48, and they're coming for home in the Delta Downs jackpot, and Mr. Z strikes the lead. But on the inside, that's Ocho, Ocho, Ocho. He is right there, only a neck back. Saratoga Heater is racing in third. Far right is rallying down on the inside. The rest are a ways back. It's Ocho, Ocho, Ocho coming to the 16th pole. Mr. Z is digging in gamely, but it's Ocho, Ocho, Ocho. Mr. Z sticks his neck out. It's going to be Ocho, Ocho, Ocho just getting there in time. Having a prominent two-year-old can cause you to look ahead to the first Saturday in May. Ocho, 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 the leader coming clear to win it. Now Ocho, Ocho, Ocho is let loose and he strides away impressively. Drifting out just a little, but he's so far in front it doesn't matter. It's Ocho, 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 Mr. Z sticks his neck out. It's going to be Ocho, Ocho, Ocho just getting there in time. Three starts, three wins. 2014 showed much promise, but he didn't race again until three and a half months later. He made his return in the San Felipe and it didn't go according to plan. An eighth place finish was disappointing. He was on the outside looking in. A tough Santa Anita Derby field meant that Ocho 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 would ship to Keeneland to run in the bluegrass. And they're off. Carpe Diem and Ocho 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 both flashing early speed. A third place finish raised his total to 30 points, which means that he's safely into the starting gate for the run for the roses. San Felipe Stakes and Santa Anita Derby third place finisher Bolo is also in the field. The son of Temple City is trained by Southern California based trainer Carla Gaines. Last minute defections have made it possible for the following horses to make it into the starting gate. Keen Ice has one win in seven career starts and has netted 22 derby points from a fourth place finish in the Louisiana Derby and third place efforts in the Risen Star and Remsen. Nick Zito's Fremento has 20 derby points. Fermento ran fourth in the Bluegrass and third in the Fountain of Youth. The son of 2008 Breeders' Cup juvenile winner Midshipman has been in the money in three of seven lifetime starts. The 141st Kentucky Derby is Saturday. Stay tuned to TVG and HRTV leading up to the race for all the latest derby-related developments and news to help you make your selections. Wednesday, 6 Eastern Time, 3 Pacific Time. Join us on HRTV for The Works with our crew on site. Todd Shrupp, Simon Bray, Donna Barton Brothers, Scott Hazelton, and Caleb Keller. And from the Los Angeles studios, Christina Blacker. That's Wednesday on HRTV, The Works.